the story of Lamia is a familiar one, especially for ancient Greece. Once, there was a beautiful mortal woman who had the unfortunate luck to catch a god's attention. This particular mortal woman was a wife and mother, queen of Libya, though such things were of no deterrent to Zeus. When Hera discovered the object of Zeus's attention, Lamia was punished with a cruelty extreme even for Hera. Similar to Hera's curse upon Hercules that caused him to slay his family in a fit of madness, Hera cursed Lamia to consume her own children. But the curse upon Lamia only began with her offspring. Tormented by the loss of her children and unable to take revenge on the cruel gods, Lamia avenged herself upon all the children of humanity. Transformed into a child-eating demon, her true form is unclear, possibly because, as with so many vampires, Lamia is a shapeshifter. She is often given serpentine or otherwise ophidian features, and this may be inherited from the Libyan myth of man-eating beasts with the upper torsos of women and the lower extremities of snakes. Hera's curse dictated that Lamia would never sleep, forever weeping for her children. Out of pity, Zeus allowed her removable eyes for a modicum of occasional comfort. Lamia is sometimes thought the queen mother of the Lystragonians, a tribe of Sicilian giants with a taste for human flesh. Their father was Lystragon, a son of Poseidon. In Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus lost many ships to Lystragonian rocks and many of his men to Lystragonian teeth. Like Lilith, Lamia was known as an individual and as a species. Both feared for snatching babes from their cribs. In time, Lamia transformed from a child-eating monster to a man-eating seductress, devouring her would-be lovers. Just as Lamash II and the Lilithu of Mesopotamia became intertwined with Lilith, so too are Lilith and the succubi of Judeo-Christian folklore intertwined with Lamia and the vampire women of classical Greece. Her similarities with Lilith were such that by the Middle Ages, Lamia was commonly in use as a synonym for Lilith. The Latin Vulgate translation of the Bible, Pope Gregory I in his discussion about the Book of Job, the Archbishop of Rheims, and Dom Calmet in his study of vampire lore, all use Lamia in the singular or plural as a translation of the Hebrew Lilith. Lamia is sometimes equated with Gelo, a demon whose name is thought derived from Galu, the guardians of hell in Mesopotamia. In what is thought the original version of the Greek tale, Gelo was a virgin who died tragically young but returned as a vengeful ghost, a phantasm, targeting virgins and children in her spite. Gelo's tale is especially similar to the tale of Felinian of Macedonia, a maiden who died before her time but returned to her corpse, animating the dead body to consort with Makates, a handsome young man guesting in her parents' home. Felinian fell once more into death when her mother beheld her, and the horrified townspeople immediately burned the girl's body. In time, Gelo too became a type of being, Geludes, and they took on more qualities associated with the Babylonian monster named Abizu, becoming less ghostly and more demonic. Abizu's name is likely derived from the primordial monster deity of freshwater, Absu, but in behavior strongly resembles Lilith or Lamashtu. Known by many names, Abizu is the restless demon of miscarriage, infant mortality, infertility, and many other maladies. She is thought serpentine as Lamia, but with some Piscine features, perhaps a relic of her Babylonian roots. In the late antique Book of Magic, known as the Testament of Solomon, she is given a thorough description that marks her as an estri. And there came before me a spirit in woman's form, that had a head without any limbs, and her hair was disheveled. And I sat down and said to the demon, Who art thou? And she said, I am called among men Obizuth, and by night I sleep not, but go my rounds over all the world and visit women in childbirth. If I am lucky, I strangle the child. But if not, I retire to another place. For I cannot for a single night retire unsuccessful. 
for I am a fierce spirit of myriad names and many shapes. I have no work other than the destruction of children and the making of their ears to be deaf and the working of evil into their eyes, and the binding of their mouths with a bond, and the ruin of their minds, and the paining of their bodies. When I, Solomon, heard this, I marveled at her appearance, for I beheld all her body to be in darkness, but her glance was altogether bright and green, and her hair was tossed wildly like a dragon's and the whole of her limbs were invisible, and her voice was very clear as it came to me. Tell me by what angel thou art frustrated, evil spirit. She answered me, By the angel of God called Arloth. And I, Solomon, having heard this, and having glorified the Lord, ordered her hair to be bound, and that she should be hung up in front of the temple of God. As with Lilith, medical amulets used to protect against Abizu, and her ailments were popular, many inscribed with the name and image of Arloth, the angel who confounds her. In the legend of Saint Sicinius, a woman named Melitine is possessed by Abizu, surrendering her children to the demon. Her brother, Sicinius, earns his sainthood by redeeming the children and exorcising Abizu. Before banishing her, she is compelled to reveal her twelve and a half true names. In one version of the story depicted on a surviving fresco from St. Apollo's Monastery, a figure known as the Holy Rider tramples this demon, while her winged serpentine offspring flees the carnage. Besides Lilith, Gello, and Philinian, Lamia is most often linked with two other monster women of Greek myth all associated as much with witchcraft as vampirism. Of the three, Impusa is distinguished by her parentage and her appearance. She is the daughter and agent of the tripartite witch goddess Hecate. A shape-shifting demon, Impusa is said to have a copper leg in her true form. Impusa and her kind, the Impusae, are especially associated with the seductress aspect of Lilith. Impusa was even known to fatten young men up before draining their blood. Her legacy as a vampire is remembered in the unauthorized film adaptation of Dracula, Nosferatu, where Dracula's analog, Count Orlok, arrives via a ship named the Impusa. Mormo is sometimes thought to be Impusa's father, with one modern occultist naming Mormo King of the Ghouls and the consort of Hecate. Classically, however, Mormo is thought simply yet another alternative name for Lamia. In one version of her story, Mormo was a wet nurse of Corinth, who ate her own children and then flew away into the night. As with so many monsters, Lamia and her sisters were adopted by the Romantics. The English poet John Keats redeemed Lamia somewhat, retelling the story originally from Philostratus's Life of Apollonius of Tiana, featuring the capture of an impusa known as the Lamia of Corinth. In Keats' narrative poem, the Lamia, she remains a serpentine monster woman, but more tragic than evil. Impusa the individual and the plural Lamia appear briefly in Goethe's Faust during the Walpurgisnacht scene, but the vampire women of Greece take center stage in his poem The Bride of Corinth, first published 1797. Impusa, Lamia, and Mormo all seem to contribute to the character and story of the titular Bride of Corinth in Goethe's ballad one of the first significant works of vampire fiction, though essentially a retelling of Philinian. There is no one origin for the vampire myth, but the modern legend arriving from Eastern Europe and codified by Stoker's Dracula descends from Lamia and her family of murderous pestilence demons and bloodthirsty ghosts, each evolving and growing in complexity as with civilizations themselves through the intermingling of cultures and societies.